I hate virtual backgrounds. Well, maybe hate is a strong word. It's not so much that I don't, that I hate them. It's maybe more that I just don't like them a lot. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a bit strong. Here's what's happened. I've seen a lot of people using virtual backgrounds and the majority of them that I've seen, they've got a few things happening that trigger me, I think. <laughs> now, let me be fair, let me be fair. There are a lot of reasons why people might use virtual backgrounds. Maybe you had a meeting that happened unexpectedly and your background wasn't set just yet and so you decided to use a virtual background. Or maybe there's a lot happening in your background. It's just busy, a lot of bookcases, a lot of different things and you're just figuring it's easier to use a virtual background. Here's a challenge with that. In a lot of cases, the virtual background can actually end up being more distracting if not done well than what was in your background in the first place. If you've been in a Zoom meeting lately, you know what I mean. Let me take you into Zoom really quickly to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm in Zoom and I'm gonna go through some of the virtual backgrounds that are here. So I go down to the video option here and I choose virtual background and I see background and filters and I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So I'm gonna click the first one here blur and that's a new virtual background option that zoom has uh and it's not bad you can kind of see a little bit you know of the shadowing and as i move my head and as i move my hands around you kind of see stuff happening there if i choose another virtual background the san francisco bridge check this out you kind of see all sorts of crazy happening there so look right here all right let me see if i get closer you kind of see look at that craziness happening there, you know. And the same thing if I move my hands, fingers disappearing, etc., etc. Let me choose another one. If I choose the grass, yeah, you can kind of see this happening. Um, and a lot of people come on with this one right here, <laughs> right? I am on Neptune or whatever planet. I'm assuming that's Earth with all the lights for the, from the cities in the background or something like that, yeah. All right, but same deal. Here, I move around, fingers disappear, etc. And especially if you're a hand talker, that, that's a little bit nutty, right? Aurora Borealis, ooh. Okay, let me go to another one, all right? The beach. But check this out. I'm actually going to bring this settings back over here. And notice that I'm wearing a green shirt here, right? And if I click on this, I have a green screen option. Look what happens to my shirt. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. So if I do this, look at that. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. All right, look at that. Italy is right in my chest. All right, and yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the green shirt aside, yeah, um, I don't like all of the different things that happen. Let me take off that green screen. I don't like all of the different things that happen with my hands moving or the shadowing or what people call sometimes the halo effect moving around my body. Here's the deal. As long as there have been weathermen, we have been using green screens and virtual backgrounds. So it's possible to do virtual backgrounds really well. If you've got the right lighting, if you've got the right setup, then you can have virtual backgrounds, maybe with green screens that are not as distracting. But maybe if you don't have the room to trick your entire background out to make it look like a YouTuber, here are a couple of things that you can do instead of using virtual backgrounds. The first thing is you can use a photography backdrop, which is just what I've done. My background is a photography backdrop that I've temporarily mounted. While you can't see this on camera, you know, here it is. Here's the edge of that. And of course I've got sound bass traps, but I've just literally stapled it to, to the wall. My son has his backdrop space in our basement and here's how we put it together. 
Yeah, so this is the edge. We've gotten those garage hooks, okay? Hooked it to a pole. And there it is. You can get photography backdrops anywhere from $20 to $60, $70, 80 on Amazon, depending on the size that you need. I'll actually put some links in the description below the video for you to check out some on Amazon. If you don't have the space to get a full photography backdrop, you can also get what is called a collapsible photo backdrop, and there are some of those on Amazon as well. For example, here's one on Amazon that has two sides, not the cheapest, but it has the, the wood look on one side, and then if you were to flip to the other side, it's got that Olin Mills senior photography look. And this one is about $139 on Amazon. Not the cheapest, as I said, but very flexible. You can collapse it and it's portable. And you can take that photography backdrop around with you if you need to do a virtual meeting or session on the go. Listen, if you have found this information valuable, do me a favor. Do you mean a favor? Do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click the bell notification button so you can be notified every time I drop new videos. If you have questions or if you have ideas that you want to see me make videos about, make sure that you leave those in the comments and I will respond personally. When I answer your question, I'll even give you a shout out in that video. That's all I've got. I'll see you in the next video.